Bob Cole and Brent Penwarden, who are members of the Kyuka Yacht Club, and they are hosting the 2019 MC Masters Regatta in June. Uh, dates? 21st to 23rd. 21st to 23rd, and Kyuka is just a beautiful body of water, and we thought that we would uh, take this opportunity to get a little no local knowledge about the club and the waters of Kyuka. So, um, Bob on the left here and Brent on the right, I'm going to ask them some questions and then they'll go into some details. First of all, guys, uh, tell us about the Yacht Club. Is it a big uh, big building and all of that? What's it like? Oh, how did you go first? Okay, uh, the Yacht Club building was uh, built actually by uh, Brent's father and my father in the 70s. It's been updated uh, recently. Uh, nice accommodation for uh, men and women. Uh, Good shower facilities, a bar, a dining area with a kitchen. Uh, we'll be able to accommodate everybody for uh, meal times, breakfast, lunches, dinners, and uh, uh, I think that everybody will be very comfortable with uh, the clubhouse itself. The grounds, uh, we've got about 600 feet of lakefront, and that includes an ample parking area, uh, two hoists. We can hoist in. There's also a ramp if uh, folks want to uh, ramp in. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, actually, the association is familiar. We have hosted the Masters one other time in 2009 mm -hmm. and the Nationals in 2011. Mm -hmm. Many folks are familiar with Cuca, mm -hmm. and here we are back at Cuca. We must be doing something right. We're looking forward to it. Yep. All right, tell us about the uh, the waters now and, and where we sail. And uh, we have a map here, and I'm going to bring this camera That's over. Right. Hold that up. Does yeah. that I'm so gonna, work? I'm going to, yeah, I'll so one focus of the, one down on One of the first on things it. we like to tell people is that, you know, the, the lake is a glacier-made lake, and it's all spring-fed, hence it's really clean water. When I say clean water, I mean potable. Yeah. You can grab a cup of water out of the side of your boat and drink it and not have to worry. All of us that have cottages on the lake that don't have public water, which, I don't know, do you have public water on your side? Nope. And so the water comes directly out of the lake. Yep. It I mean, did turn my hair white, though. <laughs> amazing. But it's, so it's it's literally clean. My father was a doctor and tested it for 20 years, and it never came back non-potable. So it's uh, mm -hmm. it's fantastically clean. Even, even today when you'd think most things are polluted in some way. Yeah, they've done a very good job of making sure that all the uh, all the places around the lake are up to code, up to health department codes, and making sure that they're uh, protected so the lake stays clear. So it's good. You so can from see our docks, eight feet of water or so. Yeah. Oh, it's I was nice. going to say thirty. Nah, I think can't. I can see the bottom of the lake at uh, thirty feet deep. Really? My eyes are better than yours. Maybe so. Yeah, <laughs> maybe <yeah>. so. <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. So it's a it's a Y shaped lake as you can see from the from the picture here, mm -hmm. and the yacht club's over here on the west side, almost midpoint between the two sides. It's a little bit further south than the midpoint, but mm -hmm. but uh, right at the kind of the wide point of the lake, um, we race right out in the middle here, and we mm -hmm. try to the prevailing wind is from the south, mm -hmm. and hence we end up sailing kind of in this spot right here, um, just south. If we get a little too far north where that bluff is, the the air like starts to get a little squirrely because it start splitting to go on each each of the two legs yeah um, or if the wind comes from the north we'll generally sail over in this side here we might go up into the north branch but usually we're able to sail on the south end um, down there so mm -hmm. and how far across is there? there's a scale on the so right mile thing, at the but... widest point so which is literally club, right here out to what we call the powerhouse over here is about a mile mm -hmm. now and again we get a west breeze so that would come from left on the map to right and uh, so we'd set up our uh, bottom marks in uh, the east side here and then come back to the west. Mm -hmm. The lake is at about 700 feet above sea level. The hilltops are at something like 1100 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially if the wind is coming over the, the hill from the west then uh, things can be interesting. There are shots, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, you have to be ready for the wind to come down on the water with mm -hmm. short notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of skips yeah. off the water, and so you don't, you can't see all the shots when it comes from that direction. So mm -hmm. the, the west wind kind of takes all of our local knowledge out of it because it's unpredictable. We know it's going to come from the west, and we know it's going to go 50 degrees either side. That's yeah. all we know. No so different than the guy next to us. Does this shore have the same hills? It does, but the wind very seldom 
from blows these. from that direction. Yeah. And if it does, it usually means we're going to get a storm and we want to get out of there quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and East breeze is uh, is kind of funky. I remember yeah. we had a, an MC regatta a few years ago, and that was one of those rare times when we had east breeze. And I have a photo of everybody standing up. So the whole fleet of 20 of us or so are all standing up trying to make it through this, this east yeah. breeze. And everybody's saying, well, what do you do in this area? We say, we don't know. <laughs> we don't sail in this area. <laughs> all right, what about a north breeze? It's pretty stable, more stable because north of breezes, the... North breezes, north and south, are usually very stable, yes. Mm -hmm. They're usually pretty stable there. You know, the fluctuations aren't nearly as bad, mm -hmm. so it's not, it's not bad at all. And, and you said that if it is a, um, a south breeze, you would sail more down south of the club? Yes. And very frequently when we're sailing into a south breeze, uh, we find it uh, advantageous to uh, stay on the west shore. Oh. Um, there seems to be a shore effect, so uh, the port tackle uh, carry nicely along the shore, mm -hmm. go out on a short starboard tack, and then uh, yep. uh, take your port tack again and again along the shore. And Come the, back along the shore going downwind? Uh, Actually, yes. Yeah, you would uh, head on back to back to the shore. And now that I've said that, uh, I, I'm sure that somebody's going to prove me wrong. Oh yeah, I've proven myself wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's not an so, absolute by any stretch. Right. Yeah. But uh, the other the other thing that's uh, very prevalent is in the summertime we have the, the south breeze is, is a uh, comes up in the morning, usually up by seven, down by eleven. Oh. Now that's having, what we say. Anyway. Having said that. It's not always that way. Sometimes we can't tell the difference. Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks like a normal, what we call a thermal, mm -hmm. but then it'll stay all day. Mm -hmm. And I, to this, to this date, I'm 57 years old, and I can't figure out at 9 o'clock in the morning whether it's just a thermal going to die at 11 or if it's going to stay all day because it sometimes it does. And I, I never figured that out in my life. I don't know about you. Um, well, uh, I was a regatta chairman for the Eastgau Easterns at Cuca a couple of times, and uh, we overcame that a bit by starting early. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had our warning at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, we as masters uh, aren't bothered by that because right. we're in bed by 8 p.m., so right. no problem, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Question back to the sailing. Will this be dry sailing? Could be. Uh, in fact, it's, we don't it's have any gonna, mornings at the club per se. So. It's going to just about have to be dry sailing, yeah. uh, but uh, we can get everybody uh, in and out quickly. Uh, we'll have a team of folks. Uh, if you want to leave your boat in, yes, uh, you could tie fore and aft between some of the, the docks we have there. There's probably there's, room to do that for six or eight boats if they really want it to wet mm -hmm. sail. You know? But for the most part, like I said, with the two of the two one-ton cranes that we have, they're all really close. It's paved surface to get from your parking spot to your to the hoists. We get people in and out quick. It's a, it's it's very fast to get them in and out. Sounds and like you. We don't even need to do the we don't need to do the golf carts like they do here. We just do them all manually. It's pretty quick. Oh, good. Because it's not a ramp. Yeah. So awesome. we do have a ramp, but if you really need one. Awesome. It's easy yep. to move the boats on the macadam there. Oh, yeah, We've got absolutely. the black top, so uh, the right. little slope down to the hoist, and the one person can push a boat back into parking. That's easy. Awesome. So, yep. With that, just tell me about that. <laughs> okay, so a uh, little curiosity about Cuca Lake. Uh, the water in Cuca uh, enters and uh, it enters in two different directions. So from the west branch, the water enters southbound. Mm -hmm. From in Branchport. The, yep, in Branchport, which is off this map. Yep. Uh, then from the south end, Hammondsport, the water enters and, and uh, flows to the north. At the bluff, uh, the water then proceeds out the exit and into Seneca Lake. So Up it's uh, one of a few bodies of water anywhere where the water flows in two directions at one time. Is there measurable current? There is no tide, there is no current. That being said, on some occasions, like twice in my life of sailing, which is mm -hmm. uh, more than I want to say, <laughs> um, it, there have been three or four days of strong wind in one direction, uh, for instance, a strong southerly, and uh, then for a couple of days after that, uh, the water will 
uh, it, it will have been piled up in the north end from that strong southern mm. and then the water will flow back down and the lake will kind of equalize. Mm. So for instance if you see a south breeze uh, with the committee boat, uh, the boat end of the line not facing south but facing north, it's because there is that current. Mm -hmm. So, but like mm -hmm. I say, I've seen it twice and I've been sailing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's not likely to happen. Interesting. But be forewarned. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Very good. If you uh, look at, at a map of western New York, you'll see the Finger Lakes. There are about 11 of them. They all run more or less north and south. But there is one lake which uh, is uh, in the, the shape of a Y. I call it the thumb and the, the index finger. You know, so there's Cuca Lake, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to find it on any map. Mm -hmm. uh, you can approach uh, our area from the west on the New York State Thruway, Interstate 90, mm -hmm. or uh, on uh, Interstate 86, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then uh, come on into the, the Finger Lakes. The exits are marked. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on housing. I'm the housing chair. You can go to the uh, NOR to get in contact with me by email or by phone and uh, we're going to do our best to house everybody in uh, comfortable accommodations and homes along the lakeshore. We've been successful at that uh, in the past and uh, we think we can do it again. Do you have any restaurant or other attraction recommendations? Yeah, so there's several. Um, so where we are right here on the lake, on the if you see on the map here, so about a half a mile south of us is a restaurant, the waterfront restaurant. About a half a mile north of us is Lakeside Restaurant. Right across the lake over here is the Switzerland Inn restaurant. Is that a long drive to get over there? To get from here to there is, is a good half hour, I think, to drive there. It's yeah. obviously a quick 10 minutes by boat. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. But it is, it is a, a little bit of a ride. When you go down into Hammondsport, there are several restaurants down into Hammondsport. And I believe, knock on wood, um, a mile out of Hammondsport on the west side is a restaurant there on the water. The, I can't remember what they're calling it now. Is it back to Three Birds again or is it back to Snug Harbor? Yes. There's a there's a <laughs> restaurant a mile out of Hammondsport on the lake mm -hmm. that I believe is opening again this spring. Mm -hmm. They've uh, gone in and out of business uh, multiple times over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, this map shows uh, some other attractions. Uh, there is the Heron Hill Winery, the Dr. Frank Winery, uh, several wineries, and yep. uh, along this west side, there's something called the Cuca Lake Wine Trail, and so it's a fun thing to go. Uh, out to, a, for instance, Bully Hill Winery. They've got a lovely luncheon there. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice restaurant and cooked with wine. Mm -hmm. um, over to the east is Seneca Lake uh, with the Seneca Wine Trail. Mm -hmm. um, in Corning is the Corning Museum of Glass, and on uh, Market Street in Corning are a number of yep. very nice restaurants. Uh, beautiful food at the Corning Museum of Glass. Mm -hmm. um, not far away is Chautauqua. Uh, about uh, two hours drive west is Chautauqua Lake and Chautauqua Institution. Uh, a couple of hours, maybe three, uh, is uh, the uh, Niagara Falls. And uh, so if folks want to make a real occasion of it and come mm -hmm. for a, a solid week, there are houses for rental. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks can make day trips to some of these attractions I've mentioned. Yep. Uh, we love our area. And we're very happy to show it off. Yeah. Right. There's also the other thing we didn't mention was there's also a couple of uh, of craft breweries. Actually, a few of them are very close to the yacht club. They're literally like right here and here, mm -hmm. ten minutes away by car. Mm -hmm. And another couple uh, around the area. They're they're popping up left and right. Every time you look around, there's another craft brewery popping up. So which is really neat for guys that like to look at all the, the new craft breweries. And so we're gonna have as part of the regatta, we're gonna have a craft beer tasting. Um, one night and hopefully a wine tasting another night. So, yep, should be should be fun. Uh, should be, should good, be no a problem. good time, and we're very glad to have the association come back to visit us at Cuca. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, guys. Is there anything else you want to add? No, just come and enjoy the cleanest water you'll ever sail on.